So today, I want to get into the subject of reboots, both on TV and film. Now, the definition of the term reboot has become quite broad over the years. It was a term that really emerged in the 2000s because obviously it has its origins in computing, to reboot or restart a computer. So as most people still didn't have personal computers in the 1990s, the term reboot is technical jargon that most would have been unfamiliar with at that time. Now, as to when the term reboot started being used in the context of a returning TV show or film, I'm not exactly sure. Perhaps some of you can enlighten me in the comments, but I recall it seemed to become very much popularized between around 2006 to 2009. I recall hearing it become especially common back in 2009 when the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek film was released. It was described as a reboot of Star Trek, and it certainly was. But here's the thing. Back then, the term reboot in that context meant something very specific. It meant a very particular type of a remake, which is a reimagining, a reset back to the start of a story, and a completely different interpretation to the original, which is precisely what Star Trek 2009 was. So in that respect, 1987's Star Trek The Next Generation is not a reboot, and it's obviously not a remake of the original. It is a sequel series or spin-off, a follow-up, a chronological continuation of the original Star Trek series. While Star Trek 2009 is technically a remake, but it's not a remake of any particular original Star Trek story, it's a very different take on Star Trek in both casting, style, tone, and visuals. It therefore reimagines the universe of Star Trek and the series itself, and thus it is referred to as a reboot. I've actually always wanted to address this because in recent years the incorrect usage of the word reboot in the media really was a pet peeve of mine, but reboot has now been wrongly used so often that the term has come to mean a sequel and not just a remake or reimagining. For example, the Star Wars sequel trilogy that began in 2015 with The Force Awakens and ended in 2019 with The Rise of Skywalker is often referred to as a reboot trilogy. But this is not technically correct. It is a sequel trilogy, and there is a difference. A reboot does not retain the previous continuity of a franchise, whereas a sequel does. And that is why we refer to this Star Wars trilogy as a sequel trilogy. An example of a reboot would be the Christopher Nolan Batman films. They are not a sequel to the Tim Burton slash Joel Schumacher films that ran from 1989 to 1997. Each of the Nolan Batman films are a totally new story and a new interpretation of the Batman universe not previously seen on film. And though they obviously make use of situations, backstory, themes and characters which have been utilised in other Batman films and in the comic books, the films themselves are not remakes of previous Batman films. They do technically fall into the category of remake, as in they are remaking the Batman universe and stories, but they are absolutely a from-the-ground-up reboot, with a completely separate continuity of their own. Likewise, the Andrew Garfield Amazing Spider-Man movies are also a reboot of the Spider-Man universe when compared to the Tobey Maguire films. Though that situation has now become more complicated since Spider-Man No Way Home because they now technically cross over thanks to the multiverse plot device. Recently, it was announced that the US version of The Office would be returning. It's not clear if this will be a 10th season of the original US Office or an entirely new series with a new name. Either way, it's a very unoriginal idea but some people incorrectly criticised this, calling it a reboot of a reboot. This is also incorrect. Technically, the US office is not a reboot of the UK office. It's a remake or US adaptation. This forthcoming new series or season of the US office will in fact be a sequel to a remake and not a reboot of a reboot. Now, I know a lot of you in the comments are going, why are you talking about this? I just always wanted to address this because I know I'm being pedantic and I'm basically quibbling over irrelevant semantics. 
you are absolutely correct. None of it actually matters. The point is, language does evolve through misuse of terms and words as well over a long period of time, and Reboot has changed in its definition. So I just wanted to get that off my chest once and for all. So with that out of the way, <laughs> look forward to the comments on this one. I recently watched a video by Emergency Awesome about the reboot of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he had an interesting take that I think is worth discussing. He maintained that one of the primary reasons why the franchise is set for a reboot is simply that it has become far too complicated for new, younger viewers to fully appreciate or keep track of all of the elaborate backstory and characters from 15 years of MCU films and TV shows, and I think this is an important point that warrants some consideration. Yes, the franchise is a bit rudderless now, considering it's not been the same since Endgame, and it should have ended with Endgame, as we've said many times, but the MCU and its characters were always likely going to be rebooted at some point, as superhero franchises always get rebooted every 10 to 20 years anyway. Although, to be fair, characters like Batman and Spider-Man have been rebooted far more frequently than that, it seems. But if a studio wants to keep a property feeling creatively fresh and financially profitable, an occasional reboot is necessary to reset everything to zero and start again. The MCU has 33 films as of next month's film, The Marvels, and there are so many television shows I lost count a long time ago. Even before the recent big budget shows on Disney+, Plus. There were a lot of shows. It is a very intricate and multi-layered universe now. In fact, the MCU as a franchise itself may as well be a multiverse. Some shows intersect directly with MCU canon, other series are only partially tied into the canon. Many of the films and TV shows are based in different eras along the MCU timeline, so trying to sit down and watch the entire MCU in chronological order is an extremely difficult task, and that's chiefly the reason why a reboot has been inevitable for some time now. The franchise is simply too big, too heavy, too complex. There's a new young generation coming through now, and they will be the future audience of Marvel productions. So basically, Disney and Marvel are going to want to streamline everything. This next generation audience would not have been old enough to remember Iron Man 1, and this was the part of Emergency Awesome's video I found most interesting, is that reboots help to simplify things. Emergency Awesome maintained that the key to the future of the MCU lies with the multiverse experiment seen in Spider-Man No Way Home, which saw Tom Holland's Spider-Man interact with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in the same story. So, what appears to be the direction they're going with, what appears to be on the horizon, is the emergence of a new ultimate Marvel Cinematic Universe, which will start from scratch and reintroduce old characters with new actors and so forth, but also, through the use of the multiverse plot device, will allow old MCU and other Marvel properties to connect with it. So if legacy MCU actors want to come back into the fold, they can cross over to this new gigantic MCU at any time via the multiverse gimmick. So in a sense, Disney slash Marvel get to have their cake and eat it. They can reboot the franchise and start all over again, but also retain connections to previous incarnations. And Spider-Man No Way Home showed that it's a popular move and that it can work. So what do you think about this? Is this a solution for the MCU? Of course, personally, I think it'll be all for nothing if the message is still being pushed by that stage. So guys, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.